So, let's talk about lore. <laughs> lore, 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 lore. Oh, oh, lore, lore. Is lore important? Yes and no. Don't you love that answer? Don't you just love it when I can't give you a direct answer? Why am I saying yes and no? Because technically anything is considered lore. <gasps> I know. Isn't that crazy? For example, how many of you know the YouTuber Jay Schlatt? I talk about him quite a bit on this channel for a very good reason. Maybe you might not know Jay Schlatt. Maybe you might know Germa. These are two live streamers, two male fleshy IRL streamers on Twitch who are very, very, very big. And they have lore. Dude, I, I wait, what did you say? Remember, you look like the yellow M&M today. Yeah, I kind of do. What are you, what, what are you talking, why did you know that? Why are you talking about that? They're not VTubers, but they have extensive, a massive amounts of lore about them that their entire community, even even them have cultivated. So is lore important? I Yes, it is. It's important in the sense that lore is what helps build history between you and your audience. When lore is not important though, that part this is worrying about it and worrying about your lore and worrying if like you know, letting it control and manipulate everything about you because you're so scared of not getting your lore down. Lore takes time. Lore is just a very fancy way to kind of say history. It's your history. So there is a difference between good lore and bad lore. And I don't really like saying bad lore. I feel like there isn't really such a thing as bad like bad lore, I feel like it could just be improved. So what is considered good lore? In my opinion, and I will be having an actual um, lore expert to interview more about this who like professionally does this pretty soon on my virtual life, my little podcast stuff. But to me, from what I have researched and the years of just trying to make good lore, good lore is when y it is clear, concise, and easy to understand. Imagine given a pitch of your lore to your parent or like a teacher or even a five-year-old if they get confused then your lore needs to be worked on a bit more it needs more improvement something simple interesting so if you notice i didn't use the word simple because you can have very interesting and like detailed lore all that matters is is it easy to understand so let's go back to jay schlatt for a second because he has he does not have simple lore his entire lore, for people who don't know, is that he's a New Yorker. He his he has some like almost kind of deranged like New Yorker like uh, I think the word's bunker like bunker mentality. He's kind of like a little paranoid. Um, he did something in nineteen what was it? Oh gosh, I can't remember the year. I could have sworn I remembered the year. Oh man, I'm struggling with my Jay Schlatt lore right now. And that's not even because it's difficult. That's just because I'm dumb. Any Jay Schlatt fans in chat can tell me about the year that Jay Schlatt did that thing that we don't talk about on stream? That would be great. Anyways, that's kind of the point, right? It's like, <clears throat> when you were to enter a Jay Schlatt live stream, he displays these characteristics that shaped him from his history. His lore has shaped him into this like, this persona that he has. And that's just a very small tidbit of his like history that him and his chat have cultivated over the years. He also came from the Dream SMP. Yeah, so there are some Jay Schlaff fans in chat. Wow. Oh, wow. Interesting. Way to out yourself. That's so interesting. You're correct. Yes. So these types of things can be intertwined with your VTubing persona because I am so so sick and tired of people being like, but what if my VTuber is just me? What if I don't want to be a character because my VTuber is just me? And I... Going back to the Jay Schlatt example, if VTubing is just an extension of yourself, it may be either an exaggerated version of yourself or if it is just point blank, just yourself, then everything that goes on in your IRL life is your lore. Whatever you did at work today, 
that's part of your lore. Do you have children? That's part of your lore now because if your VTuber is yourself to that, that, to that degree, everything that happens in your day to day is your lore. What you had for breakfast is part of your lore. And if you got an upset stomach, maybe you're acting like a little, like a little, I don't know what word I was trying to say. You're acting like a little brat because you had an upset tummy. That's your lore. Okay. But if you're playing a character, if you're playing an exaggerated version of your personality, if you're having some kind of persona, your lore can either be cultivated by you or by your community as interesting experiences happen. So what is considered bad lore? <laughs> All this text. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Bad lore to me and from what I have seen and also what I did is inconsistent storytelling, randomly adding or removing friends, adding too many details that don't make sense and being vague. Now, okay, I know some people are gonna be like, what do you mean I can't add my friends to my lore? What do you mean? My best friend is my part of my lore. We were roommates. Like, okay, Becky, relax. If you wanna add your friends or your kids or your dog to your lore, then you can. But remember, that the people who are watching you are going to be confused when someone or something that was a part of your lore originally suddenly disappears. For example, I made the mistake of adding my dog Momo to my lore years ago and well, spoilers, she passed away. Now I have a model that has my dog as part of my VTuber model and it looks just like her so I have a constant reminder of my dead dog with my model. You can kind of see where that kind of like has a continuity issue, right? Like, I, I hope that makes sense. Because it's like a similar feeling when your favorite show starts killing off your favorite character. Just, you know, for why not? <laughs> like, you know how people feel about that? They get kind of annoyed, especially if it happens constantly. So when it comes to like lore, adding and removing people and stuff like that, just be mindful of it. You can be friends with people and not have them included in your lore. And when I say this, this is a little bit different than like your VTuber being yourself. And like, this is more towards people who are trying to be like a character and they literally write in like this other person into like, like let's say you're like a dog or something and you have like this owner and then you change owners and stuff. It's it, it, it's kind of like that. You can still have friends and have your dog and have everything else without it being part of your lore. And like I said, I had to learn this the hard way. I also had to learn about how inconsistent I am with my storytelling. These And these are just things that you kind of learn over the years of like doing this. So if you're really struggling, you spent like, I don't know, two weeks writing your lore and you're just like, this sucks. Like, I just don't understand. I have some books I recommend for you to read Um, because I read these. And this kind of helped me put into perspective on like lore um, development and character writing. I recommend Save the Cat. Even though it's more about like playwrights, it brings up a lot of great examples on creating a pitch to explain your concept to someone. It has a lot of good fundamentals of storytelling and how to like use these storytelling elements to be an entertainer. Or just be more like, be a better conversationalist, especially if you're trying to be like, well, yeah, I guess entertaining a conversation, right? So I really recommend that book. I also recommend Build Better Characters. Uh, by Eileen Cook. This is more this is more of like the psychology and backstory of how to use it in your writing to like hook people and even though yes it's about writing it still can apply to like entertainment. To entertainment. I also recommend watching other media that has characters and lore around it such as watching movies, TV shows, anime, you know something that's not just scrolling on TikTok all day long because that's not really gonna help you like understand lore and like building characters. To understand the fundamental concepts you kind of have to observe how a lot of things are done and how you can inspire from those and consuming other types of media will help you do that. And that's my whole spiel on lore for today. Gosh I could make so many videos about lore. We're not doing that today. I don't want to spend three hours on just lore. Isn't Save the Cat a storytelling archetype? It does talk about storytelling archetypes, but that can still be applied to like characters and like implementing these into your content because think of, so I'll go back real quick for the slide for purposes. Think of storytelling 
Not in the literal sense. Think of it as more of a metaphorical sense, where if you go to live stream, even if your VTuber is just yourself, you can still tell a story without literally telling a story like, oh, hey guys, today I had breakfast. Oh wait, no, I didn't. I didn't have breakfast. Oh shoot, I haven't eaten in like four hours. You know, and then I decided to like make this PowerPoint. Like, no, you can actually tell a story through your personality and things that you're saying. Like, man, Mari must be really tired today. She's just kind of like on edge. She seems uneasy. These are things that can be displayed through either acting or having the correct verbiage that you're using when you're talking to people. And like, you can kind of take that throughout the entire stream. Oh, is Mari gonna start acting more deranged throughout the entire stream? Is she gonna like, wake up a bit more? I wonder if the caffeine is kicking in. These are different ways you can storytell live. That's why I recommend Save the Cat. Like I said, don't take the things so literally. Try to think a little outside the box. What I really want to encourage people to do is not be afraid to be creative and to dream big. Remember, everything can be taken with a grain of salt and you can apply it in a way where it's meaningful to you. So Save the Cat, in particular, what I took out of that was specifically how to write a pitch and how to write a pitch about your VTuber persona and the branding, which we will talk more about branding later and like how I used Save the Cat to write mine. That's how I did it. So yes, even though it's about archetype storytelling, I was able to use Save the Cat to essentially summarize my VTuber concept based off of the fundamental principles that are explained in that book. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Mmm, what about cameos in lore? Oh, that's a really good, like, question. Oh, that's a really good question. So, I'm gonna take cameo in the sense of, like, it's lore that- it's history. It's history that has been developed over time with, like, experiences. Remember how I said earlier how you can, like, develop your lore with the experiences you share with your audience? That's kind of like what cameos are. Versus you started writing your lore saying, I am a sleepy cat girl who is best friends with John Cena. I don't know who, I don't know John Cena, but, but if I did, that'd be kind of interesting. But if I like started off, let's say I didn't know John Cena. Hey, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm best friends with John Cena. And then John Cena, I get into a fight. We never talk again. Like John Cena gets canceled and he turned out to be some evil, like whatever, whatever. Right. And now I got to take him out of my lore. That's more what I'm talking about when including other people versus like, oh, I did a collab with John Cena. So now it's just kind of like a, oh yeah, remember that one time that Mari did a collab with John Cena? That's kind of like the differences between those two like good and bad lore. Hopefully that makes sense.